Hi, it's Paris from Epic Review Guys, and everybody knows about solar power, but not too many people have first-hand experience with a home that's actually solar powered. Our house, for the past seven years, has had solar panels on the roof and some equipment here on the side that turns us into power that we use in our own home. Let me show you how it works and explain what it's like living in a solar powered house. Epic Review Guys. Here's a closer look at our rooftop solar system. We have 18 panels in all for a maximum of 3 kilowatts of electrical production. Our solar panels sit on the south facing roof of the house at oh maybe a 15 degree angle but since we're about I don't know 31, 32 degrees north of the equator here they should be angled differently for better efficiency but this is the cheapest way to install them pretty much flush with the roof. And we have neighbors just across the street who came over to see about our system and then afterwards had to one-up us and put in a five kilowatt system. Panels connect to each other and those wires come along here, go into this and then down and come out just above the panel on the side of the house. So from the solar panels on the roof the wires come down this conduit to this box right here. It's the main kill switch if we have to disconnect the system. The voltage coming through here is much higher than you use in your home and it's all DC at this point and you can see here at the bottom we've got a lightning arrestor. Of course if there's a lightning strike on the roof and it hits the solar panels that electricity would come right into your house and burn up all your devices. So we've got a lightning arrestor. The cable then comes over here to this box. This is the expensive one, several thousand dollars. It does the work. This converts the DC power to AC 240 volts. And if we look at the panel, it cycles through several screens. We've saved 43,000 pounds of greenhouse gases. There's our photovoltaic input right now. And there's the actual power. AC power is 1630 watts. So 1 1.6 kilowatts at the moment. So this gets, in this box, the power gets converted from high voltage DC to 240 volt AC. It then comes over to this box. Here's another kill switch. You can disconnect things here. It also has its own lightning arrestor. Then we go to the box. Now, of course, in the fun old days, you had the dial, the mechanical dial that would go backwards with the electricity going through it. But all right, the electricity then comes over here comes up into the circuit breaker box and this is the box that basically is the interface between the grid and our power. And now it's cycling through several screens and um, I, when I used to come out here all the time, when we first moved in, I brought a notebook out <coughs> every morning and made a note of all the numbers and kept track and made graphs. Anyway, we've been here seven years. I don't do that anymore, but it basically cycles through showing how much power has been provided by the solar, how much has come in off the grid into our house, and then some combination of those two. This is the view from the backyard. You can see the solar panels, some of them up here on the roof. I think it makes for a distinctive looking roof, not an ugly one. It actually looks a lot prettier to me to see this and to see the smoky haze on the horizon from more coal and oil being burned to make electricity. In the case of our neighbor's solar installation, I would say that that cobalt blue actually accents the color of their house. Now I did want to dispel a myth about solar panels only working in direct sunlight. Even places like Seattle that are cold and gray and damp, sort of like it is today here, 37 degrees and light rain, if you have solar panels on your roof, go out and look and you will see that they are actually making electricity 300 watts, even in the light rain. So how is it living with solar panels on the roof of the house? Well really other than making us more aware of where our electricity comes from and trying not to waste it, it's really not any different than living in a house that's fully powered by the grid. All the work goes on outside where things get switched between the electricity coming from the solar panels through all those boxes. If we're producing more power than we need in the house, that goes on out into the neighborhood. We're actually powering our neighbor's house. But at night, or on a dark, drizzly day like today, where we're only producing a few hundred watts of power, and between the refrigerator and the heater and some light bulbs, we're definitely using more than that. Well, then the electricity comes 
from the grid generated by City of Austin utility into our house. Wherever it's coming from, it still lights up the light bulbs just the same. So over the course of a month, over the course of a year, do we make more power than we use? The answer is no. That three kilowatt system is just not gonna do it for us. Maybe if we had the neighbor's five kilowatt system. But here you can see a graph of our electricity usage. Over the last year, there those really high spikes are the summer, central Texas, 95, 100 degrees every day. The air conditioner basically runs August, September, non-stop. Over here to the right, you can see on the meter that measures how much electricity we've gotten from the grid, some information. And then over here, this is how much electricity the solar panels, solar PV. And you can see that this is uh, mostly the month of January. We made only 170 kilowatts. Now, in the winter, we don't make nearly as much power because the days are shorter, because the sun is lower at a lower angle in the sky, and because of the weather. Um, in the summer, we'll make almost double that, but we're using so much more power. Now, it has happened, I think, one or two months in the seven years that we've lived here that we actually did make, at the end of the month, more power than we used, and we got a credit from the electric company for, I don't know, it was 50 cents or something like that. But most of the time, we have at least a small bill. The cost of our solar panel system, when the previous owner had it installed about nine years ago, was, I think, about $20,000. Now, there were federal government rebates, there was City of Austin incentive programs, so I think the money that came back was about $15,000, which means out of pocket, the previous owner paid about $5,000 for the system. I would say on the average year, we get the benefit of about $350 worth of electricity, so that means to pay off that $5,000 would take somewhere 12 to 15 years of solar panel use, and it will have paid that $5,000 for itself. So, Definitely, in terms of it costing $5,000, it was a good financial deal to have the solar panels installed. If there were no incentives or rebates and you had to pay the full $20,000 price and you lived in the city where your other option is just using on-the-grid power, it's not a good financial decision. You will likely never make back the $20,000 that you spent on the solar panels, so economically, it's not a good deal. But if you're putting solar panels on your roof because you believe it's the right thing to do, then everybody wins. You can sleep at night with a clear conscience, and your neighbors, even if they think you're a little silly, on those really sunny spring and fall days, some of the electricity in their house is coming from your solar panels. At Epic Review, guys, we search far and wide. Late night infomercials, we never take sides. Click in the corner, come join our tribe. Honestly, we want to see you subscribe.